you were on a major daytime daily show that is watched by millions and you walked away. Can you speak to, to not being afraid to walk away from a check and also being true to who you are and trusting that if God blessed you with that opportunity, he's still in the blessing business. He will bless me with another that aligns right with my spirit. I mean, you just said it. I mean, for what it's worth, I've been in this game a long time and I've worked, I've worked so that I do have the options. Like people would always ask me like, what's your goal to have your own TV show? Like, what's your goal? I said, my goal is options. I don't ever want to feel like my back is against the wall. I want to have options. And so in me continuing to develop like spaces like sfbsociety.com, my, my smartphone and black show, like going vi- like creating the viral version of it during the pandemic, um, continuing to keep relationships with people like Jesse Collins, just not even just keep them, but grow them, you know, like that's a friend now, you know, all of these things have allowed for me to have a, a certain level of a safety net of knowing that um, I'm never going to let myself fall. I'm letting myself fall when I stay in a place that doesn't allow me to keep my integrity and be my authentic self. That's when I'm failing. And that was what that show was. It reached a point where it was like, I wasn't, (laughs) this is outside of my purpose. And I've been always very in touch with like what works and what's right for me and what's not right for me. And, you know, Sometimes we're in we're in scenarios where we just got to stick it out. When I worked at Sirius, I wanted to quit Sirius like every other week. <laughs> I had a boss there that was just the devil, and I just wanted to quit every other week. And I I didn't have the I didn't have options, so I just had to suck it up. I will. I mean, it was DJ Self and Q Tip who would talk me off the ledge every other week about quitting Sirius Satellite Radio. You can't do you can't do it, Dave. You can't do it. You got it. You got to just stick it out, you know. And it was like. I hate it here. And it's like, yeah, but you know, I'm a legend, but you're not. So, (laughs) (laughs) like, and and it took time. Um, But at the real, my whole excitement about working at the real was that I felt like I was going to get to be my authentic self and be in a space where I could speak freely and that that would be supported. And when that wasn't the case, it was mind boggling to me. And it was kind of like the last straw of my introduction into Hollywood. And it really threw me. And I had a whole breakdown. I've talked about it on The Breakfast Club. And it wasn't that they were the sole case, sole reason why, but they were the tipping point. And, you know, fame is just a real, um, fame is just a, a pesky thing. Because if you didn't like I didn't come into the creative space to get famous. Like getting famous is a byproduct of the creative space that I came into. And there's no like lessons on it. You just have to manage it and deal with it. And one thing that I will tell you, if you're not also working on your work, but you need to also be working on yourself because people think that when they get to success, everything is going to be okay. And everything about yourself that you weren't working on while you were putting all your energy into your work I promise you, will come right to the surface just as your money comes in. Because now you're not distracted by your grind. So before your abandonment issues or your, your, uh, um, your insecurities, your uh, imposter syndrome, all that stuff that you kind of like tucked away because you were like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And you were a workaholic and you were just, you know, behind the computer and handling shit, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you made it. All of that stuff comes right to the surface. You, you were boxing out in the paint before and now the shit comes right down the line. And it's like, it slaps you in the face. And that happened to me. Well, why was it important for you? Because I watched that Breakfast Club interview. And that is a very personal, very sensitive. Uh, and again, it goes to Fearless Amanda. To be so transparent 
I, I, I don't know if it was a full on nervous breakdown or if, if I don't know what, but you were very transparent that you went through a major low after reaching such an incredible high. And I'm hearing you speak about it even now on this platform. Why is this so important for you to share? Um, I think because I really have a problem with like the, the facade that is put on fame and success and it, it's really detrimental in particular to like, I feel to black folks in particular, because there's so much that we expect from ourselves that other cultures don't, right? And that expect from our communities. And when we get into these spaces, we are carrying so much more with us in terms of stress and, and you know, um, wanting to prove and we've had to oftentimes go through a lot more levels of like of blood, sweat, and tears, right? Because you got to work twice as hard to be to make it even half as far, and all that. So by the time we get here, we're so drained, um, and then we get mad at ourselves because we think, "How dare I be exhausted? How dare I feel sad? I made it." I got money or I got success, I got visibility, I made it, how dare I? And it was important for me to be honest about that because it's, it's, it's an unfair expectation to think that you will go through all of that and not eventually feel it. It's like, I'm so glad that we are in a world that's now giving like light to postpartum depression. Like pregnancy is, hard as fuck and then you have a baby and then you got to like just give everything to the baby and you know there's this beautiful like glowing you know presentation that a lot of people give to pregnancy and a lot of mothers will tell you this shit damn near killed me <laughs> like you know what i'm saying and it's this false facade that and then people don't feel like they can express their pain and then they fall prey to their pain and we just don't, we shouldn't have to do that. And, um, and it doesn't, it, and, and you don't gotta be a celebrity to be able to do that. I'm just saying like, abundance doesn't mean that you can't also express like mental health concerns. And we in the black community have such a stigma around mental health and we always feel like, not always, but oftentimes there's, there is a stigma that says that like, you know, if you, um, go to therapy or if you express pain, you know, or depression that you have a problem. Um, like somebody hit me the other day and was like, you can tell she didn't grow up with no father. Listen to how she talks. And it's just like the, when we, when we, when we do stuff like that and say stuff like that, it's just more so deflection and projection of the fact that we haven't centered mental health as an important aspect to our wellness. We look at success and materialism, but we never really put enough energy into that space. So that's why it was important for me to talk about it too, because, um, you know, I just want to always be inclusive. Of, I always want to be authentic. That's always the goal. And I would have been lying if I said, you know, shit is sweet. It wasn't. I mean, Biggie, you know, he wasn't lying. More money, more problems. More problems. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.